Hello, and thanks for joining me. Um, you know, I was just enjoying um, some fall-like weather out on my balcony, um, and I thought it was a perfect time to do the end-of-summer book tag. You know, I live here in the United States where we typically define summer um, as from Memorial Day, starting at Memorial Day, which is typically late May, and um, runs all the way through Labor Day, which is the, usually the end of August or the early September. And here, uh, it's, it's only a couple of days away. So the end of summer, uh, while it's not the end of summer per the calendar, it is by, um, by sort of just the way the culture that I'm from anyway marks it. Um, for you people in South America, I guess you've got a while uh, before you can do your end of summer. You've got several months to go before you can do your end of summer book tags. But, um, yeah, so it's just a perfect time. I was tagged by Richardson Reads. Um, I, the, this tag was originally created by Simply a Book Lover. Um, so let's jump into the tag. So the first question, you know, the theme is summer, summer reading. Um, the first question is summer camp. Which book had your new favorite character? So, you know, I just finished um, a few days ago um, a biography of Tchaikovsky, Pietro Tchaikovsky, the music, you know, the composer. And I was going to say that, um, but I, I, I'm actually working on right now finishing up The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Um, I'm almost finished with this. I should be finished with this either tonight or tomorrow. And I think I'm going to answer my new favorite character to be the wife of Bath. Because Allison, um, her name is Allison, the wife of Bath, is quite a character. Um, you know, I, in my high school, we did a, 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 a few weeks on Geoffrey Chaucer and the Canterbury Tales, and we did not read The Wife of Bath. And now I kind of understand why, because she's really pretty bawdy. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> she, um, she uh, seems like she's quite domineering of her husband's, and she's had several. Um, and she um, she describes herself, if I remember, this is just um, uh, sort of off the top of my head, uh, not a quote, a uh, paraphrase, but she describes herself, she says um, that her body's ruled by Venus, but her heart's ruled by Mars, because she seems to be um, pretty domineering. But I'll discuss her a little bit more when I do the book chat. I should have a book chat for the Canterbury Tales coming up pretty soon, um, right after I've finished all the tales. So, yeah, favorite character, Allison, from The Wife, the wife of Bath. Um, number two, Summer Vacation. What was your favorite book of the summer? Okay, so I'm going to say, I thought about this a lot, um, but I'm going to answer Homo Deus by um, Yuval Noah Harari. This is a brief history of tomorrow. I've talked about this book a number of times on my channel. Um, you know, it's it's futurist, and I love futurism. Um, you know, my, my kind of my go-to genres are usually... Um, Futurism, speculative fiction, science fiction, or the past, you know, history. So I seem to be one of these people that is, is either, like, stuck in the past or looking into the future. So I really have to work on it to keep myself grounded in the present. But, yeah, I enjoyed that so much. I binge read that, basically. Um, and um, so I'm going to pick that as my, you know, really my most enjoyable read of the summer. So least favorite. Um... Summer Rain, least favorite work. Um, let me pull up the cover for you. I'm going to say The Jazz of Physics, and that's not because this is a bad book and that I didn't enjoy it because I did enjoy it. Um, the Jazz of Physics by Stefan Alexander, it's that um, this was a push book for me, you know, one of those books that you choose um, to push yourself, you know. So this sort of science, physics, um, some of that I had to kind of, you know, <laughs> rack my brain to understand. He does write in a very narrative memoir type style, so I was able to follow his ideas quite closely, but nevertheless, there are mathematical and phys concepts from physics in there, uh, such as, you know, the beginning of the universe that sort of stretch your brain. So um, as far as effort goes, um, you know, that would be my, my least favorite, just because it, it required a little more work than the rest of the books that I've read over the summer. So, number four, Last Days of Summer, a book you wish you had read this summer. Um, okay, so I'm going to say, um, pull up the cover for you. 
The Kiss of the Spider Woman by Manuel Puig. Um, this is an Argentinian writer. You know, I was having this dialogue conversation with myself um, recently around, you know, what kind of th book themes I want to include in my 2018, you know, must read list. So I was kind of working on my must read list and I was thinking over some ideas. And one of the ideas I had was about, you know, how people construct their realities, you know. Um, and I was thinking, like, what books would be like, people constructing different realities you know and I thought of Kiss of the Spider Woman because this is um, takes place in a prison and if you're not familiar with the story it was made into a movie in the 80s I've never actually read the book but based on the movie um, two prisoners um, in Argentina one's a political prisoner and the other one's I think been jailed for pedophilia whether or not he's guilty I, I don't know um, I don't remember that detail but um, one of them, the, uh, the political prisoner, um, really constructs the world externally, like he's an activist, a political activist. Um, and the other one really constructs the world internally, you know, introvertedly. Um, and so uh, to me, that was real interesting. So when I, when I remembered this book, because um, I always kind of wanted to read it, um, but, you know, back, back in the day after I saw the movie, um, but when I thought of it, I thought instantly wanted to read it, you know, and I had to, had to really talk myself into just waiting till I finish out my must read list, but I will get this read in the next month or two. So number, um, five, assigned summer reading, favorite classic of the summer. Okay. So favorite classic of the summer. I didn't read that many classics this year, uh, this summer. Um, I read, um, Mrs. Dalloway, I guess would be considered to be the um, the main classic um, can't seem to find her. I won't I won't bother with pulling up that book cover because I didn't like that book cover anyway. I read kind of a cheap electronic edition. So, but Mrs. Dalloway is really the only classic classic. But um, I'm going to give a little bit of more of a nuanced answer and maybe say Zone from Matthias Einard. This is a 21st century, early 21st century work. So I don't think it could be, by most people's definition, considered a classic yet, because it hasn't stood the test of time. But I, th I think that um, when the early the literary history of the early 20th century of the world gets uh, written, um, there's, there's a reasonably good chance that this book published in France in like 2008 would be included in, in that. So um, I did a book chat on that. I did a book chat on all of these, actually. So I'll put the details to the chats if you want to hear more about the works um, in the details below. So, uh, let's see, back to school shopping. Favorite books obtained this summer? That's definitely my books in Portuguese. Um, I was inspired by the medieval reader, uh, did a video about reading in a foreign language, you know, to, to learn a, in, when you're learning a foreign language. And I'm about an intermediate reader in Portuguese and I decided to order these books um, in Portuguese uh, to read, to you know, to really to, practice my, my reading skills and to um, really just work on my, you know, language skills. Um, and so um, I couldn't find these editions in, in the U.S., so I had to order these from Brazil. Um, this is Poes, Poesia Completa de Alberto Caeiro. Um, this is one of Fernando Pessoa's heteronyms, poetry, the complete poetry of Alberto Caeiro. Um, and then here we have the Libro do Deso Sossego, by Fernando Pessoa. This is the Book of Disquiet. Um, an interesting thing oh, recently uh, reading in this, um, I was actually able to read a poem and understand it um, without translating it in my head um, recently. So that was kind of a milestone in my, um, in my journey to learning Portuguese. Um, so this has been a real good experience so far. This, this, um, the Book of Disquiet has been a little more difficult for me to read. Our, read more through the poetry and that's kind of surprising because I thought the poetry would be more dense and more difficult to grasp the concepts but it's not turned out to be the case so but these were my favorite uh, purchases of the summer really probably of the year so far um, so let's see first day of school first book you plan to read this autumn um, okay I'm going to um, I'm planning on finishing out my must read TBR um, but then once that's finished, um, I should finish that, I think, in the next two or three weeks. And um, I'm really planning on reading uh, The Dark Forest 
by Si Shin Lu. There's the cover. This is a sequel to The Three-Body Problem. The Three-Body Problem won a Hugo Award. It was the first work in translation to win a Hugo Award. And I've been really, you know, itching to read the next two, uh, finish out this series, this trilogy. So I'm going to jump on this uh, after I finish my must-read list um, and, uh, in, later on in September. Um, it's possible that... Um, that my reading list, my must read reading list will run right up to the end of September. If it, that turns out to be the case, what I'm going to read is um, Provenance by Anne Leckie. Um, I read her other series, the Ancillary Justice, Ancillary Sword, Ancillary Mercy series, which won, uh, I think, to Hugo, the Ancillary Justice did, and I absolutely love that trilogy. This is her new newest uh, work to come out. It's coming out at the end of September, so I will be reading that very very quickly as well. So number eight, favorite subject. Which new releases are you most anticipating? Well, Provenance, for one, because I've already pre-ordered this, which is very unusual for me to pre-order a book. Um, but I pre-ordered this, so this is already bought, just waiting on it to arrive. Um, and then another one that I'm looking forward to very much is as a God Might Be by uh, Neil Griffiths. Um, Neil Griffiths has a booktube channel. It's one of the first booktube channels that I really started to follow. And um, so I've he's been writing, he's getting this book published. It comes out in early October. And I've gone ahead and pre-ordered this as well from Amazon UK. So as soon as this gets in from UK, um, I will be reading this too. So I'm looking forward to this very much. Um, that's it. That is the tag. You know, I never know who to, I never know who to tag though, you know. Um, so, um, thinking CR Flames fan, Cheryl, if you're interested, if you think this is fun, I'd love to hear your responses. Um, SSF reviews, SFF reviews for, uh, from Peg. Uh, Peg is a relatively new booktuber. Um, she focuses on science fiction, particularly uh, newly new releases. Um, Peg, if you think this sounds like fun, I would love to hear your responses. And maybe um, Run Right Reads. I love that alliteration. Run Right Reads. I'm not sure if this is something you would find interesting to do, but if so, I would love to hear your responses. But really, anyone that's interested in doing the tag. Um, I'd be happy to, to, to hear your responses. So either in a video or in the comments below. So um, I'm going to close with that. Until next time, take care. Bye.